Painting in the Dark, Ashraf Armin, Blind Artist, by Rachel Burke, illustrated by Claudia Gadotti. Painting is a blind man's profession. He paints not what he sees, but what he feels, what he tells himself about what he has seen. Pablo Picasso. Eshref dabs his finger, sticky with paint, onto a canvas. He adds color and detail until the landscape comes alive. Birds glide before a warm, glowing sunset. A waterfall splashes into a glistening lake. Yet this artist does not know one color from another. His eyes have never gazed upon landscapes like those he paints. He has not even seen his own paintings. That's because Eshref has been blind since birth. Eshref Armin was born in 1953 to a poor family in Istanbul, Turkey. He had little formal education, and his childhood days were often spent at his father's shop, exploring the world around him with his hands. While his father worked, he kept busy by scraping shapes into cardboard with a nail. To others, he appeared to be making random scribbles, but to Eshref, they represented the things he saw with his fingers. One day, when Eshref was 12, he asked his father, Baba, will you catch a butterfly for me? I want to touch it to know what it looks like. A butterfly is very delicate, Eshref. If you touch one, it may die. Instead, his father carved an outline of a butterfly into a piece of wood. Eshref followed the grooves with his fingers. Then with a nail, he scratched and scraped to reproduce the shape into cardboard. Finally, after many tries, the blind boy drew a butterfly his father was able to recognize. At the time, however, Eshref was not thinking about becoming an artist. He drew to understand his environment and to feel connected to the world. In his quest, he would face many challenges. While he could understand the shapes of objects by touch, he was curious when he heard people describe things in terms of their colors. What did it mean that the sky is blue or a shirt is red? He knew only that color was an important characteristic that sighted people used to identify objects. I will learn to use colors so that people can relate to my art, Eshref decided when he was 15. He asked his father to buy him a set of colored pencils. After drawing a picture onto poster board, Eshref filled the image with colors by feeling the borders created by the pencil pressure. Baba, please give me a red pencil, he said. His father stopped working to hand Eshref the pencil. Baba, now I need a yellow one. His father again stopped to help his son. Baba, will you? His father threw up his hands. Eshref, I cannot work with all your interruptions. I will set the pencils in a row, and you can memorize their order. Baba laid them out. White, black, yellow, brown, red, blue, and green. This was the order that Eshref would use from that day forward. Eshref constantly asked about the colors of things. There was a lot to remember. A watermelon skin is green, but the inside is red. The sea appears light blue on a sunny day, and black on a cloudy one. Flowers, butterflies, and clothing can be many different colors. But Eshref had a remarkable memory. Once he learned the shapes and colors of objects, he never forgot them, and could draw and paint them on his own. Eshref also overheard people talk about shadows. One day he proudly showed his father a new picture. Look, Baba, I've made a picture of an apple casting its shadow. No, Baba laughed, you've drawn two apples. Eshref had assumed that a red apple would cast a red shadow. His father then explained how shadows worked, and, and Eshref soon learned how to color them correctly. At 18, he began using oil paint. After planning a picture in his head, he painted with his fingers so that he could feel the surface. With oils, it was necessary to wait a day or two for one color to dry before adding another, or they would smear. As a result, it often took Eshref weeks to complete a single painting. Incredible, people would say when they saw Eshref's pictures. It's almost hard to believe he's blind, some said, peering into his eyes for evidence of sight. The positive reactions inspired the artist to challenge himself further. To make his work appear more realistic, he wanted to learn about perspective, creating a three-dimensional appearance on a flat surface. This was a difficult concept, so he sought the advice of an art professor, who explained how size and angles show depth in a picture. The professor drew examples for Eshref to feel, demonstrating how a road or bridge appears to narrow to a point as it stretches into the distance. Eshref understood and applied the methods to his work. He practiced until he could paint in perspective as well as many-sided artists. Eventually, Eshref got married and fathered two children. 
As a blind man without an education, however, he struggled to support his family. Sometimes, sometimes he found odd jobs, but mostly he helped in his father's shop, making and selling tin heating stoves. Despite his struggles, he made time to draw and paint. He wondered if he could make extra money by selling, selling his paintings. Then in 1988, a member of a civic group called the Lions Club invited Eshref to display his art at their monthly meetings. Many of the club members bought his work, and word began to spread about the amazing blind artist. He was featured in local news articles, magazines, and even in a television documentary. Within two years, he went to Holland for his first foreign exhibit. Eshref gained more attention when he began painting portraits of well-known people. After asking someone to trace the details in a photograph, he studied the facial features with his fingers. He reproduced the images onto poster board and added paint. Baba was proud. Someday, Eshref, the whole world will hear of your extraordinary talent. But with his new popularity came skeptics. There must be a trick, some suspected. Someone must be helping him, insisted others. Perhaps he had sight as a child, they said, or maybe he's not really blind. On the one hand, Eshref was flattered. My work must be quite good for there to be such doubt, he thought. Yet he was frustrated and saddened by people's questions about his blindness. In 1993, Eshref faced the most difficult time in his life. His beloved father and greatest supporter died. Shortly after, his marriage ended. Eshref moved into the cramped place that had been his father's shop. With little money to live on, he was poor and often hungry. Eshref tried selling parakeets and artificial flowers in the shop, but the businesses failed. Through it all, he continued to paint, using a board placed over his bed to serve as an easel. Occasionally, he'd sell a painting for a few liras, but overall, the days left him lonely, and he feared a bleak future. The following year, an organization for the blind arranged for Eshref to exhibit his work in the Czech Republic at a foreign art festival for the visually impaired. Joan Aronsell, an American living in Turkey, was asked to be his guide. Eventually, she became his manager, interpreter, and closest friend. Joan believed in Eshref as faithfully as his father had and was determined that the world should know about him. She promoted his talent by arranging interviews and exhibits around the world. Over the next few years, Eshref continued to improve his work. He switched from oil paint to quick-drying acrylics and invented his own artistic techniques. He handcrafted stencils, which enabled him to make identical images within a picture, such as multiple windmill blades or butterfly wings. The stencils also helped to prevent the details in the pictures from smearing. The innovative artist also developed a special type of relief painting. By molding bits of clay onto his canvas, he could raise and shape images before painting them. Schools of fish and performing clowns seemed to leap from the pictures. A few years later, he invented yet another technique. By dipping thick thread into craft glue, he could shape details onto the canvas. When it dried, he could paint neatly within the textured borders. While more people noticed Eshref's work, he was frustrated by the many who questioned whether he was truly blind and painted without assistance. In 2004, however, scientists gave him the opportunity to put his unusual abilities to the test. Eshref was invited to the United States, where he met with a team of researchers. There, an eye doctor examined Eshref and found that one eye had never formed and the other was diseased. Using special medical equipment, the doctor tested the reaction of Eshref's eyes and brain to stimulation such as flashing lights. The test confirmed that Eshref was completely blind and likely had been since birth. Then Eshref met with Dr. John M. Kennedy, a psychologist and expert on artistic development and the blind. Kennedy challenged Eshref with increasingly difficult tasks. Draw a road leading away with cars at different distances. Feel these objects and draw them from above, from the sides, and at various angles. Draw wheels in motion. Although these challenges would be difficult even for a sighted person, Eshref tackled them with confidence and succeeded at every one. The researchers were stunned by his abilities. You took my breath away, said, Can said Kennedy. This man is astounding. Eshref was the first known blind from birth person to have mastered perspective. But how could a person who had never known sight draw objects as if he could see? To understand how Eshref's brain worked, doctors put him inside a machine that uses scanning technology called fMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging. It recorded the activity in various parts of his brain. While he drew pictures, the part of his brain associated with sight became active. 
a finding that surprised the scientists. This indicated that without vision, the brain can rewire itself, allowing fingertips to provide the same information to the brain as the eyes do. This historical discovery was a breakthrough in the understanding of the brain and our senses. The research could even help scientists develop new technologies that would aid blind people in seeing through other senses. Eshref returned to Turkey, finally having proof that he was not a fake. But while the scientific community was now aware of Eshref's incredible talent, he remained largely unknown to the rest of the world. He and his new wife, Niluf Nilufer, a blind poet, lived on little income. To make matters worse, his health was failing. His whole body ached, and he was having difficulty walking, but doctors did not know what was wrong. As his illness progressed, he worried that it would affect his ability to paint. Eshref felt hopeless and depressed. He questioned whether he would ever realize his dream of being seen as a serious artist. Meanwhile, a major television company became interested in Eshref after reading the scientific reports of his abilities. When they featured him in a documentary about real superhumans, millions of television viewers worldwide watched his dancing fingers bring to life a shimmering sea of rolling waves, soaring seagulls, and distant sailing boats. Before the cameras, Eshref drew a famous eight-sided building in Italy, making history as the only blind person to ever draw in three-point perspective. Eshref had proved that you don't need eyes to see. People began hearing about him and bought more and more of his paintings. His work was exhibited in many countries. The blind artist received letters from around the globe. You have suddenly changed my whole world and how I see it, said one man with disabilities. The father of a blind child wrote, We were moved by your determination to live life without boundaries. One woman who never believed she had talent now decided to paint. It will fill my soul as your art fills yours, she declared. Eshref was pleased to have inspired so many people. By working in a visual area as a blind person, he said, I have shown that there are no obstacles that can't be overcome. Having finally achieved his lifelong dream, Eshref knew that his father's words had become a reality. Someday, Eshref, the whole world will hear of your extraordinary talent. <laughs>